All right, we back for the culture, y'all. We are approaching 2,000 followers. 2,000 followers, y'all. We finally almost there, y'all. But to get this 2,000, we brought in a guy here who has a fan base, man. Really dope guy named Ryan Cooper, man. Introduce yourself more, man. Uh, yeah, my name is Ryan Cooper uh, from Fort Worth, Texas, but I reside here in Orlando. Uh, out here doing the music, out here spreading the truth, uh, lessons, all of that. That's real, that's real, that's real. So what do you do exactly? Um, I'm a poet. I'm a poet by trade. So uh, what I do exactly is piece together words that way they hit you in the right field that they need to hit you in uh, to spark, you know, some type of higher thought. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. Um, do you have any projects coming up? Did you drop a project lately? Um, last year I dropped a project called Eleven Eleven. What did uh, you drop it on? What was the domain? Uh, I dropped it on SoundCloud. Cool. Uh, cool. cool. It was during like a time that I was uh, discovering myself spiritually, so right. I decided to piece it together, give it to the world. Um, and more recently, I got a single that's coming out called Young and Dumb. Okay. Um, and then probably have a, a, a project drop in the second quarter. Uh, so so the type of artist you are, are you a uh, hip-hop artist, a uh, neo-soul singer, or are you like a, uh, what, are, what type, what, what is your genre? Uh, I'm hip hop. I mean, that's that's you the hip hop. That's the culture. That that's the co that's for the culture. I'm, I'm sorry, I hate to ask that because I say the same answer. You know, okay, okay. it's just all hip hop. Yeah. yeah. But now people say that you know it's uh, neo soul. It's soul hip hop. It's conscious rap. Yeah. It's trap. Yeah. Like I'm a I'm a rapper, bro. But I make hip hop songs. Yeah. But most of my songs is for crack dealers. I mean, so that does that make me a trap rapper? Technically, it's conscious rap. Conscious rap? Okay, so all like, rap should you, be conscious though. Well, when you look into the history of hip hop, and that's where they jacked us up at. When you first look at the even the follow up to hip hop, you had like soul, Sugar Hill, gay, blues, we didn't jazz, have, funk, all that we stuff. We had funk and then hip hop. And then it branched into hip hop, right? And then when you look at hip hop, most of all the tracks that came out on hip hop was conscious rap. Like that's all they talked about. Until, I don't, I don't. until you had groups like NWA and then until you had groups come in and say like bitches and hoes and shit okay. like that. You get what I'm saying? Alright, so so where I, I'm in the middle with that is and I and I used to run with the uh you know the the conscious rap uh like lingo but then for me I had to I guess grow within just myself to realize all conscious meaning is just to be aware of something. Just to be aware. So exactly. like would that be said not to take away from the point that you was making because you definitely speaking facts, but uh, all all music is conscious. It's just yeah. uh I feel like the perspective on how you looking at it really. That's dope. That's dope. Um what's your do you have a single out now? Uh it's called Classroom Doodles, uh young Classroom Doodles? Doodles? Yeah. <laughs> John Doodles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Classroom Doodles, where can they find that at? Uh, you can find it on SoundCloud, it'll be on iTunes. So on Under Ryan uh, Cooper? Yes. Under Ryan Cooper. What's that, C-O-O-P-E-R? Yeah. Straight up. Spell it straight up. So, so um, how was the transition from Fort Worth to um, Orlando, Florida? Um, I mean, it was smooth. I mean, it was smooth. Uh, I grew up in Fort Worth when I, when I turned uh, 18. I went off into the military. I was gone for four years. What, what branch? Uh, Marine Corps. Oh, you were a Marine? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I commend you, bro. Yeah, I commend you because, like, you know, from stereotyping, I'm a big stereotyper. <laughs> I, I just be saying Marines are jarheads, and yeah. you'll never be nothing but a jarhead. Yeah. No, I mean, look, Except I mean, Mr. Rogers. He was a Marine. I know so many military people. They're like. Ray Sean, who was just on this show, gone, blue hair. Could y'all imagine blue hair? He was a fucking Marine. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, jarhead for real. I mean, because they take what's in there and they put what they want to put in there. Yeah, you feel me? So that's where the term jarhead comes from. That's where the term comes from? Yeah, so it's like you really, um, it, the transition coming out, you got to, it's like you unlearning. Did you, you let them hypnotize you? Oh, no. My good. mom is a fighter. She taught me a lot. Good, 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 good. good. Shouts out to I mom. Mean, I mean, when you join any branch, too, I tell people, like, like, listen to what they say. Like, you know, you're being built back up a soldier. Like, they mean that. They definitely do. Break you down and fill you back up like a soldier. They definitely do. That's They definitely do. So as far as, um, you know, with the transition, you know, you said that um, from the court, you went to the court first, then you came here? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you were kind of disciplined. You weren't rowdy. Because most guys that I know who come from other places in the country here, they see the women, they see the 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 the, the, the 
the drugs, yeah, yeah. the weather, yeah. women weed and weather, should I say, like Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> they go crazy, bro. Yeah, nah, they get new nicknames when they when they ain't tech really? boom. <laughs> yeah, man. I know a dude from DC and shit who out there now and he in DC he was, you know, I'm not gonna say a nerd, but he was very scholastic. Now he has a gun and gold teeth. And he's claiming Florida, not DC. Because well, in DC we didn't give him no love. But here they give him all the love because he's Well, it's a lot of work to be done and just in general with mentality, especially in Florida. Yeah. You know, um how somebody explained it to me one time, like for a long time I I mean, I hung with a lot of people from up north in different areas right. outside of Florida, but I'm a Florida native. Right. But the mentality is think of it like this. When you ran up north, your mind was free. From the slave quarter shit, so a lot of people' mm-hmm. mind is not free down here. Like I, you know, I'm from here. Like this we is had a lot no problems too, though. Just like yeah, so he had his text. You do, problems. but it's a limit. You know what I'm saying? Like up north, I, I know a lot of people like, man, that's not happening. Here we'll be out here burning stuff, fighting. Not saying that's good or bad, but down here it's like die and then kill your own people <laughs> and then don't even unite. You like really? Like we could have. Took this over. We could have changed things together, but I don't know. This uh-huh. is me being a native. So, 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 native. tell me this. Um, growing up, who who were your influences, man? Who were you listening to? Uh, musically, uh, musically, Najee, uh, jazz. Najee, okay. Yeah, uh, Michael Jackson, Usher, uh, Andre Three Stack. What's your favorite Usher track? Um, it's a hard question. Damn. Yeah. Nah, I would say. You about to say something? I would say. You? That, I would say the whole. Uh, 8701. Cause the you don't have the call. Yeah. That Jones was my jam, bro. You remember that when he had that? Cause tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I hit that motherfucker anyway. I hit that note anyway. Yeah, right. I'd be like, damn, bro, you can't sing, but you can hit that note. That note, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't have he the call, bro. He had a couple of uh, pretty good love songs on that one too. Usher is a great influence, man. Oh, uh, that I'll be your groupie, baby. Yeah, that's from the Confessions. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Confessions, that whole... You got to think Chili. Because it wasn't for Chili that album came out. <laughs> it wasn't for Chili, yes, it Would was. Would you still yes, work with was. Usher today? Him and Frank Chili? Thanks. Herpes and all? Man, wait, we talking music, you feel me? I mean, but Herpes on the mic, though. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't believe that, for real. That was, that was a distraction. I talked to my brother about that, so he like, oh... Herbie, genital herpes, you can't catch it. I want to talk about that real quick. You can catch genital herpes, period, bro. If she did something in the course to you, or you did something in the course to her, you got genital herpes in your mouth now. Then you kiss your mother, your aunt, your niece, your brother. They have genital herpes too, bro. Okay? This is too left field right now. What well, that's another story, though. Look, comment on I, that. I, comment I, on that if you believe what I say, though. Like comment I on say, that. I believe that was a distraction because a lot of, like I said last week, a lot of the black guys, you notice this, they are like uh, coming after a lot of the high level black men in the industry. And then you, you see how they're doing the black women, they setting up platforms. Why they can't do that together? Because it's that's what they always want to do. Boom, it's either this or that. This okay. or that. Why I can't be both. Right. So I don't. I don't believe that because when you even look back at it, they even came out and like found that all that shit was fake. I got a, a question for you as far as um. Besides Usher, who else would you work with today? Twenty seventeen, not twenty sixteen, fifteen. They were hot. Twenty seventeen. Who's going to help the Ryan Cooper career? Uh, it would have to be Erica Badu. Like that. Oh my gosh. We worship Erica Badu. Yes. Erica Badu is for the culture. Yeah, yes. yeah for the culture. She's she from the same region. She I'm worked from. with Wintertime. She did Wintertime Z's remix. You ever heard that, Joe? Um, this is rapping in Wintertime Z or whatever, right? And she did his remix because her son listened to Wintertime. That's how she was like, okay. I like that song. And it didn't help him at all. <laughs> so, I don't know. But I I believe it's different. I believe it's just yeah. a brother. Yeah, and it's no. Erica. And we know her. Wintertime didn't know Erica. Yeah. I just need one conversation with it. That's it. One conversation. You gonna drink the tea? Hey, tea and all. <laughs> one, conversation. one conversation. Yeah. That's my favorite artist. I'm number one. No, nah, I mean, she Erica she inspirational. She she like really on like a whole another creative plateau. You feel me? Yeah. And it's not uh, you know, she definitely get like a lot of attention, but it's not in the sense of 
what she's it's not no hidden type of stuff. She's been yeah. on them ways. So, like, so, so, oh. so, 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 tell me this. Um, you, uh, what's your favorite Erica Badu song? Uh, on and on. On and on. Mine is Orange Moon. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll say that shit yeah. all day, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I see the Orange Moon, yeah, yeah. I, I think of her. Out my mind, just in time. Out my mind, just in time is a great I record. I love bro. that one. Yeah, we she love you, Erica. Man, I hope you watch the show, Erica. She, yeah. she, she's like. Oh I went and saw her in Tampa live. You did? Yeah, I got pictures, videos, all that shit. I'm on in my home. So, do you travel? Uh, oh, yeah, have you been yeah. traveling? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah traveling. for the musical, just traveling like, um, some family. I mean, I, I feel like it's all of it. Cause all of it? Just because of the type of music I make. So, I mean, I travel for the music and I travel for the experience. Have you been anywhere this year that, that uh, was key? Anywhere that... Uh, yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, right before the summer, I went to uh, Germany. Germany? Uh, yeah, I was That's out dope. here in Ramstein. visiting my sister to her, like, some of the castles and stuff like that. Ramstein. Oh, you doing law stuff, man. That's dope. I couldn't leave the country. I'm jealous with that one. I'm trying to make it to Africa. I hear that, boy. So, 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 did that change? Your, like, have you been to Germany or over Europe yet? Uh, I mean, and well, when you was in the service. Well, when I was in the service, I went through. But as a civilian, civilian, but as a civilian, that was this year. Was it happened. like mind changing, or what it was? Uh, no, you ain't had no army to have your back. You don't know what the hell. Nah, hey, what you really thinking? Nah, it was all love. Yeah, it was all love, bro. That's dope. That's dope. So, I got some questions. I actually listened to your 1111. Um, not only did I listen to it, but I had a whole bunch of people listen to it as well. Uh, let's see. I actually got a song going I'm going to ask you about. Because me being an artist, especially me doing like, like I'll just give you an example. My top five is going to be Erica, Jill Scott, Lauren Hill. Tina Turner. I like I like I like that variety. Mm -hmm. And that particular song, I played it for a lot of people, and it was like, dang, he's like talking What's the record to called? my soul. Somewhere up there. Somewhere yeah. up there. Yeah. And I can just imagine. And um, you were saying a lot That's of stuff, man. and uh, it, it got me asked a question because I got my uncle on the radio. So I don't know. Uh, and you were saying some things that were really deep. Mm -hmm. Can you like break down a little bit more of that song? For anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So like uh somewhere up there pretty much that was that was a song to where I was going between uh what I know to be true versus what I've been taught to be true. And uh it was more so I, I wanna say like an alchemy process where I was realizing perspectives okay. in, in both worlds that, that I was in at the time far as the knowledge that I'm holding on to and the knowledge that's already embedded into me. And uh, it really just came came down to that when it came to creating the song. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's real. That's real right there. It's a powerful song. Um, I noticed too, because I've like paid, like, get into a song really deep. You didn't have not one curse word or anything like that in that song. That's real. I try to write music like that, man. Not with, without the cuss words, but music to where, you know, in tune with my thoughts. Do you write music for you, or do you write music because you know someone else is thinking that, and you know it's universal? Uh, I mean, well, it's all universal. And, uh, but when you wrote that record, did you do that for you? Oh yeah, yeah. When I when I when I wrote that, I, I, everything on that track I was going through. You feel me? Everything I was on going through, but I knew I was going through a shift to where I wasn't the only person going through it. You feel me? That's dope. That's dope. And, and so. I'm like, damn, whatever the hell this is, I'm going to feel, I'm going to put it on pad and shit. Somebody going to vibe to it, you feel me? Because, shit, yeah. That's, that's real. What's your, what's your passing footwork, man? Did you come up, you know, in the church? Did you come up, you know, single parent, you know, home? What was your, what uh, was your bringing up in footwork? No, uh, uh, footwork, I came up and uh, I had my mama, my daddy, both right. houses. You feel me? Of course, everything was in uh, but that's, that's, just, that's, yeah. that's, that's any home. Right. Uh, I grew up strong in the church. Uh, I'm talking about like my daddy went to a church to where like it was nothing but old people with assigned <laughs> seats. You feel me? The old and everybody, you know, uh, got the pass hand and now peppermints, turn the selection, da da da. We don't do no band, we just sing. You feel me? <laughs> and my mother, my mother, her you church. Have a drum set. My mother church, she had the band and the whole nine, so I was I was in the choir for a while. That's good. So yeah, it's good. I know people want to know that, like you know, because see, I know for work, and I, it's a whole, it's it's it's, it's gangster. 
you know, they oh, don't take yeah. it from me. <laughs> it's gangster and all, you know, so I, I just wanted people to know that you don't come from, you know, Omaha, Nebraska. You come from somewhere where people die for real. Yeah. So I just wanted to know how you overcome that. Uh, but but basically by staying in the church, yeah. both parents band on you, yeah. they got you in the yeah, service. Yeah, That's yeah. good, dog. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, staying away from mischief, you feel me? So when is you said the pro you got the project dropping or that was the last project you told us about or something uh, like that? That was the last project I uh, told you about. I'm currently uh creating, uh I'm projecting uh like uh in the summer. In the summer? Yeah. Good. You got a name? Uh no. If you don't, that's good. That's I'm good sure. too. Just stay busy, man. People want to see you busy on your yeah. IG, on your Twitter. They want to see you doing something every day. Yeah. That's what make your fans tune into you and love you because yeah. they see you doing something every day. That's advice from for the culture. I learned that from them. Just stay busy, dog. Yeah. Besides that, anybody you want to shout out? Uh, shout out to my mama. My uh, shout out my dude. Shout out pop. Uh, yes. The most high first and foremost. Hey. And, uh, yeah, all, all the people out there. All right, man. And this is the Ryan Cooper interview. Oh, all right, yeah, so that's all he's talking about. He's talking about XXX talking shit because nobody even heard of him. So Offset was like, nobody even heard you, Shardy. Why would the fuck he steal your swag? You feel me? But XXX like, man, I got 52 million views. Everybody heard of me. You feel me? Don't act like you ain't heard of me. Don't act like you're not looking at the new rappers trying to stay trendy and do what they're doing. So when they walked up on him, they asked him, they said, what's that shit you said about Drake? And they beat him up for Drake. That's basically Like what I said, that is um, bitch assness. You think that's bitch assness? I don't think grown men need to be fighting over likes. I don't think grown men need to be fighting over who said what. Fuck Drake. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's other shit going on. It's other great music going on. It's other things that you can stimulate your mind on, and you really wasting your your platform and everything that you stand for for fucking likes. So tell me this though. Let's That's say I, let's say I was a Kamasi Sharez fan, and somebody said, "Man, fuck her, bro. She garbage, bro." I will fight about that because I'm a but then I'm gonna tell you, supporter. Why would you waste your energy? Okay. Because I'm your supporter. Pause. Check this out, and this is like I said out here. All right. Your energy is real. It's precious. And when you exert your energy, that shit has a cost to it. It's a ripple effect. Your energy is a ripple effect. Really. Like, you can measure that shit. So what you saying? So the bad, the negative why, energy will come exactly, back your way? Why would you why would you entertain that? Because they, they don't because they don't they don't they don't understand it, it what you just said because negative energy becoming a way for their whole life. On a low energy. So okay. I'ma let them function. Because why? I generate light. And that is for those who can see that shit. I'm not wasting my time on people who can't see it. What is it going to benefit me? All you want me to do is look down so you can grab some of my energy. I think it's deeper than that because I think, no. I think sure, they come from a different world where they lose friends, they witness death. Yes. And I, I think you can't speak on that until you've been through that world. I lost so homies. When, look, but, I, but I, listen. I've lost homies in high school from getting their throat slit. All right, I've but how lost, did that affect you? How did that I'm affect you? Did that affect you to where you had did, to take painkillers? Because you thought you might kill yourself. But at the same time, like I say all the time, when you start to learn who you are, yeah. not what they have told you who you are, when you start to learn who you really are and understand the energy that you create and how special it is, things like that won't bound you. Your okay. heart will be light as a feather. You get what I'm saying? That's right, that's and that right. is why people get lost in a journey. They get lost because they are they like getting sucked up and they're entertaining all these ne negative stuff that was set there on purpose. Because when you get closer to the shit that you're supposed to do, of course you're going to get drowned in by darkness. You lit. You lit. They see that. You lit. How you feel about that, Ryan? Man. Man. You were speaking a lot of... Uh a lot of truth and uh, I definitely believe in the fact that once you figure out your identity, uh, you figure out how you generate energy and it is precious and you and you uh, very cautious of how you distribute it because you know that can f affect the long run of what you're trying to put your energy to, uh, to go back to like the premise of what we were talking about as far as Migos beating up. Uh, XX, I mean, uh, I feel like it's deeper than something that we can understand. 
feel me? Because I, I just don't see no grown man whooping on no another man for no reason. It's definitely deeper than what we know. I don't think it's a whole fuck Drake, and then I'm going to pull up on you because you said fuck another nigga. No, it's more to that, it. That, that don't. It's more to it. It's probably because XXX is with the unknown is some shit. And you know, they love God. Amigos love God. They like, love God. Why be with that? It's probably because of that. So they think anybody with no unknownism is weirdos. So they seen the weirdo ass motherfucker with the, with the gray dreads. And they like, man, let's press them off. And they press them off for sure. Yeah. I mean, but, but. I love it though because I think it's full of culture. Yeah. We one, need shit like that. One thing I can say though is just something we do. That I observe like XX, man. Like, he done. <laughs> like, I was just looking at that not too long ago. I was like, damn, he done took mad L's. Like, he keep getting his ass but but boy got heart. He, he got, got heart, heart for sure, but yeah, yeah to, I mean. I, I mean, I don't know how far that goes. So did Rocky, and Rocky <laughs> kept getting his ass whooped. But check this out, though, right? His whole image was the fight. I pull my knife out on you. I don't have to use a 30. I beat your ass. That's his whole image. And he's okay. been getting his ass beat. Right. So, so, so hip-hop wants to tell that man that all of that... Fighting and knock if you bust shit, that shit's out the window. Shit yeah, that yeah. shit, okay. you you gonna fight for your life, yeah. not fight in the street. Yeah. And that's yeah. how they carry it. Yeah. Chicago, the DC, the LA, the yeah. motherfucking Atlanta. Yeah. So Orlando. I think it's hypocrites. It. You think they're hypocrites? Hypocrites, hypocrites, because how y'all gonna sit here and be like, oh, that's for the. Well, y'all niggas be fighting at the shows for no goddamn reason. Like, it be for the reason, and that's no, what black be, people do. No, right? it Show, petty, don't we it act out and fight? No, we don't. Just that. Is, oh, I got so much to say. That is a trained thing. That is something that they say. This is what black people do when they go to shows. Because when you look at back in the day, when you looked at BT, Rap City, Bro, all don't this know shit. Because it's forty. No, when they, when they, well, when they showed that, at they the sh- end, Hollywood yes, took they his shirt showed. off and they got the shoot in that song. And that was I'm in 1995. You. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that didn't happen. I'm saying that that is what they showed. Oh, right. And then when you're looking at shit like that and you grow grow up off of shit like that, then you say, oh, this is for the culture. This is what we supposed to do when no if we're gonna sit here and call ourselves and dress ourselves like king queens gods whatever last time i checked i ain't never seen a king queen of god be like fighting on no dumb shit because we got serious shit going on so let's be like that we don't have to be out here rolling in the mud. It would never be like wrong. that because it's entertainment. No, it's called communication. We would and never be able thing, to live like kings and gods and not with our community beyond music. Because when you listen to old school music, all the hip hop is only a small section of our music. You gotta think about all the rest of the shit. Hip hop is not a small about. section of our music. It's mm-hmm. not. Pause. It's not. Okay, next subject. Why do you it, think hip hop is. is a small section of it our is music? A, it, it do kids is. go to school and recite R and B songs? We have, recite rap songs. That's because they don't play that shit no more. They and that's, and no that's sad because back in the day, at least if I was getting ratchet music, I knew I was gonna get a song saying, "All my life, I pray for someone." Like we wasn't on the radio, we wasn't the playground singing that song. We was what? Are song, you serious? Like Romeo and Juliet, hot Joe sex Joe. on the beach, make us wet. I Ain't that right Casey there? That's what we were singing there on the playground. But and now the kids on the playground singing bad and bougie. What I'm saying so it doesn't is, play a bad part. What I'm saying part, is, I really. know that song too, Romeo. I know that. You know that but you were the, saying that at the, on the playground. At the same time, we also have balance. So you have to learn duality. Okay. That's what people fucked up. You are the mad masculine or mad feminine or mad lust so or mad so you, right. Duality. So you feel like you, you have to be no, balanced. There's no balance in music right now. It really not because at least when I had the ratchet music, I had an even plateau. I had a balance. When you had you had uh, even female MCs was balanced. You had every element of rap. You had every element of music out. And now you only see that they put out the ratchet of the ratchets of the ratchets. I, and I'm like, we fighting for that balance to come uh, back. I, I, this is something that's still generating in my in my focus of thought. But I feel like uh, there is a balance. And we're caught up in the illusion of uh, I'm doing like definitely the right. media. Uh, so right. social media is like the biggest like platform like culture newest thing the whole shift the whole news and how we receive information so like of course all the BS and stuff gets streamed to us because that's the main source of what we go to uh, and then we're able to see more mistakes now we're able to see more and more people flawed because it's out there you feel me back then we didn't have you know a lot of artists that that were popping Michael Jackson Tina Turner all them 
life was a lot more private than it was now. So it's just uh, that's same, right. same shit still happened. I feel like uh, nothing new under the sun, bro. You know, they was it's doing just, this when when Peter cut the hair off. It's right now. Yeah. But all I want to do is just say this though. You know, XXX, you're wrong. I hope you didn't sign that six million dollar deal because your career is over. <laughs> For the culture. Yeah. yeah. We back. All right, we back with for the culture. Uh, thank you for tuning in today with us. Uh, please introduce yourself. We have this lovely black king here. <laughs> uh, my name is Jari Knows. I'm a comedian, promoter, H H L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that. Just depends on what day of the week it is. Whatever I'm doing. Appreciate y'all having me though. No doubt, no doubt, man. So, um, as far as a uh, comedian, what do you, can you write? Do you stand up? Yeah. I, I, Are you a sketch type of guy? Nah, in pro? I'm more of a, a stand up comedian. Like, I can do skits and all that, but my primary art is uh, stand up. I like to write. My angle with comedy, I try to set a goal with every little thing I do before I start getting into it. My end goal is to be a writer for like a. Any company like that does TV shows and movies, things like that, not really like focused just on stand up. You know what I mean? Have you did the stand up yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing stand up. Get booed? Nah, well, not really. I haven't got booed yet, but I've had bad shows. Never, bad show. yeah, never to the point where it's like, boo, get the fuck out of here. But, <laughs> it's quiet. Yeah, like it's quiet. Like, But I mean, I don't know, man. That shit happens to everybody, so I don't really even focus on that shit too much. As long as I'm not getting booed, I'm good. Once I'm getting booed, that, that's when it's like humiliating. You know That's why I can't be a comedian. Yeah. Right there. Do you, do you know how to jump? You know how to talk about people? Yeah, I mean, I do. Is but that how you started? Nah, not really. I mean, I used to do that shit when I was younger and shit, but the older what I... What do y'all call it out here? Roasting? <laughs> Roast, yeah. cracking. We call it frying. Frying? Yeah, we fried your ass. Where is that at? The D.C. D.C.? They gave you a thousand degrees. Nah, I'm trying to go to D.C. What's popping up there, man? Don't go. Nah, I only passed through one time. But I'm if you go to, to D.C., right, know someone. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah, a lot yeah. of things popping, but... Um, I like the all we do is rob. Yeah. We rob our brother, our sister, our brother, our father. Everybody robs. I feel like that's how it is in Philly. Actually, Philly Philly is a form of D.C., but yeah. they just don't flash and wear flashy clothes like us. Like yeah. We wear Gucci, Fendi, mm -hmm. Louis, Louis Moschino. Yeah. They don't wear that in Baltimore, Philly. They don't wear that until you go to Jersey. Yeah, because I went to Philly a couple times, and the, the atmosphere there is like, yeah, everybody's crazy. Like, everybody even, I, I went to New York for the first time, and I went to Philly for the first time. I went to the hood in both spots. And New York is hood, but the hood in Philly was like, that shit was intense, world, dog. Like, world. You can see a nigga's faces when they look at you like, yo, nigga, you got half a second longer to look at me before I touch your ass. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, crazy. It's a whole other world, bro. I still fuck with Philly, though. Philly cool as fuck. Philly I still cool have fun. Fuck, man. You got to be on your best house. behavior there, and you don't know nobody, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like I said, <laughs> if you know somebody, now it'd be the brothers who know people who be getting beside they self, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. still get into yeah. shit. If you don't know nobody, that's yeah. why I, I go to New York. I've probably been to New York about 20 times, but I've never been to Brooklyn. Because I don't know nobody in Brooklyn. Yeah. I didn't, went across the bridge and told my dad, you know what? We went to see a girl. I'm like, bro, turn around. This is up. We ain't going to Brooklyn. But neither here or there, though. You, um, what? With, with, what is what is HHM? What is that? It's a, uh, HHM is a funny story, man. It started off just like, like a, a brotherhood between me and my boys, you know what I'm saying? Like, my boy Josh, she like started the whole HHM shit, calling it that. But it's just like a mentality we have where it's like, we're gonna get ahead and we're gonna like prosper no matter what it stands for. Handsome, heartless motherfuckers. Handsome, you know? heartless motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, exactly, exactly. That's why I like it because when we started it and we were like, yo, we're gonna turn this into a business, we're like, yo, we're gonna leave the M motherfuckers. We're gonna leave it like that for now. But the goal is to turn the M into millionaires. You know what I'm saying? So we're not gonna start calling that that shit until we got that pedigree. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. Yeah, we're just building off of that shit. But right now, we just got the mentality like, yo, we're gonna get ahead no matter what the shit takes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we gotta move this way, move that way, it don't matter. Like, if you with us, you with us. If you're not, you're not. You know what I'm saying? I made a joke when I seen your shirt. I ain't gonna lie. Well, well, yeah, exactly. I said yeah, that, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's a chill, man. That's yeah, that man, yeah, Brian. Yeah. I said, oh yeah, well that's kind of rude. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. like H and M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was tight though. That's man. how it is though. Shit. Anytime you start something out, people not gonna understand it until you got that pedigree behind your shit. You know what I'm saying? And like, you have to make them ask why. Yeah, why? Yeah. We had some our original shirts. They just said H H M on it, and then we printed out like another. Uh, 
line or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It, sat, it had entertainment under it. I didn't like that shit because when they see HHM entertainment, they just like, this is a little merchant merch tea or some shit. But just the yeah. plain joints, they're going to be like, what is that about? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And then, and it's that's like an actual clothing Yeah, I'm exactly. The same way. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, now, where are you from? I'm from Ohio. Ohio? Yeah, I'm from Akron, Ohio. Akron? Yeah. You want them Jay Reed ass niggas, man? Jay Reed, who that? Oh, you ain't never seen him too deep. No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, yeah. No, yeah. shout out to Akron, man. That's yeah, where yeah. Uh, LeBron James from. Yeah. It's LeBron James' cousin right now. I moved down here the same year he got drafted. For real? Yeah. So I didn't get to see how the city turned around, but I know before that, the shit is. You about to be the next best thing out of Akron. Shit, I'm trying, so man. Up, I can't wait to meet LeBron What again. made you come to Florida? The weather, man. I moved down here with my family. Well, I tell you, weather, women, and the weed. Yeah. Opportunity, too, man. There ain't shit going really? on. Really? Come That's on. So, okay. That's sad. They said it's more opportunity, right? Hell yeah. Bro, bro, on my block, bro, I come to D.C., we listen to go-go music. Nobody would listen to my music, bro. And I made it there for them. I said everybody in the neighborhood name in the song and they wouldn't listen. Yeah. But if I when I was in a band, they listen to my music. Mm-hmm. As soon as I come to Florida, everybody listen to my music. From other states, other countries. What's that yeah. verse here? I guess. But it's like my neighborhood. Y'all the ones who we didn't put work to go to prison together, yeah. which I can't yeah. even listen to. The well, you know, they already tell you that. You know, your family, your friends, they ain't gonna fuck with your stuff until you have Yeah, because to them, I'm little Chris. Exactly. I'll never be yeah. that that It's that hometown I'm, syndrome. I'll be telling people that shit all the time, man. Like, if people know you personally, they're not gonna see you for the star that you are, you know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. If you go to LA and you be like, yo, I do this, I do that, they're gonna know you as that. But exactly. if you blow up here, they're gonna, man, that nigga used to borrow my shoes back in third grade. That nigga ain't shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, they always got a little they reason why you ain't shit. Hate. You know what I'm saying? So, I say that with anything. Like, even if you get respect here, you're still gonna be 10 times bigger if you take whatever you do somewhere else, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, as far as getting on in this city, you know, trying to meet the right people, what are some per- perils that you go through? Getting on, well, just with the I only been doing this club thing for about a year now. And club what? This club promoter. Oh, you promoting? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've been doing it for a year, and what I've noticed initially getting into it is like it's just way too much. It's too much like gossipy, like just corny shit, man. Like <clears throat> niggas are not not like really seeing the big picture here. You know what I mean? Like I, I had the opportunity of going with Vegas, going to Vegas with keeping on them. Tony Kuch, shout out John Cocky and all them, and I'm seeing like what this shit really could be. So when I come back to Orlando and niggas is out here, oh, my, my team's stronger because we made 400 more dollars than y'all last Thursday. When niggas out here is getting hundreds of thousands of dollars doing like, you know what I mean, like big festivals and shit, it's like, what are we really even talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's the- start that shit up right Yeah, now. you know what I mean? Like, and that's the shit that be pissing me off because I'm a humble dude, man. Like, I, I know everybody says that, but I show love to everybody. Like, I don't be trying to shit on people and Another thing is, when I came into this club promoter shit, I had already been putting together my own events outside the club, like these comedy shows. Like, I sell out shows with, like, hundreds of people. I put my own money up, own tickets. I design shit top to bottom. So when other promoters, they, like, talking down on other niggas, it's like, nigga, nobody's coming here to see you. You're just a nigga that's in the way in front of the door. You know what I mean? Like, I've actually sold tickets where people were paying money to come see me. And I still don't have the kind of ego that you have. You know what I mean? So that's the shit that was blowing my mind. Like, why do these niggas feel so cool, my nigga? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that's, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a whole I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? My manager told me this, man. Shout out to Precise Gaze, man. They said, these young niggas and new niggas, the people get their rocks off of Kirby. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. They get their rocks off of Kirby. Yeah. That gives them a, uh, oh, like, fuck that nigga. Whole time, bro. That's what the white man's supposed to do, bro. You feel me? Like, I would never let him know what I tell my son. You feel me? But they don't do that. They work with us, too. It's our own mm-hmm. people that do it to mm-hmm. us. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when I go to Atlanta, them promoters don't do that. It's a little small group of them who never going to make it because they do that. But when I go to D.C., the promoters do the same shit that they do in Orlando. Beef with each other, you know, or you know what I'm saying, or... Spread little rumors about each other, so don't nobody go to their show, or don't right. nobody want to work with right. them. This is just you know what I'm saying? That's, shit, that's gay shit, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not gay shit. It's just uh, messed up stuff that... Like, why knock us, man? We all from the same motherfucking mother, bro. Why knock us, bro? And that's the shit that be blowing my mind, too, because I feel like anytime I talk to somebody that's in the industry, whether they're a promoter or anything, like an artist or whatever, everybody's like, yo, I'm going to put Orlando on the map. I'm going to put Orlando on. Yeah. But that's not really their goal. They just want to be the one to do it. You know what I mean? It's not. They don't see it as, like, 
That's why I would never, like, be going around talking shit about this comedian or this promoter. Like, even if I do have, like, legitimate issues with this person, because it's like, if I make this nigga look bad, that nigga look bad, it's going to make us all look bad. Because at the end of the day, we all have the same occupation, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Straight like, up. Straight up. All, you know, and that's how people see it from the outside. So. I know just from, like, newly being out here really heavy in, heavy in Orlando, uh, it's just a lot of pettiness. It's, it really is. It's a lot yeah. of mentalities. And it's crazy because it's so many great things going on, and all it needs is organization, just network. Right. That's it. Right. Literally, just like, communication. If exactly. everybody who's exactly. doing shit just came together and said, hey, we're going to schedule this to where your shit do this, we're going to time this, da 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 and everybody come together. You know, yo, Orlando got so much shit going on, and it's for every crowd. Mm-hmm. You know how much money that we could bring into the pot and to mm-hmm. the where we could it. literally make money in Orlando and never have to leave that bitch. I believe it. But we gotta get ego. the corporate ties, man. Yeah, the corporate ties, man. It's a lot of big, like big, big yeah. money in Orlando that nobody even like knows about or is touching Tell me or about seeing. It. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like, the circles here is crazy, man. Like it's crazy, man. It's a lot of like. Like, you think your homie getting it because he, he all right, he got a little Benz or some shit, and he got a nice crib somewhere. This nigga's out here with money, like, old money, bro. And, like, that's the shit that I try to keep in mind when I'm out here and I'm doing my thing. Like, no matter how high I get, I'm like, yo, it's still. Old money. Exactly. This is a dude right now in Oviedo. It's a guy in Oviedo who's, like, one of the most legendary mix and master engineers. He got that shit built in his home. You would never know that. Nigga out here in Jens, I just picked up a uh, Mac Tower. The dude said he had a studio, had me, I went in his house, flax. I'm like, damn. Mm. You ever been KDS? You know what I'm saying? What's um, up? What's up? I haven't been, KDS? I didn't go to KDS. I've been to Plush. At KDS, that's what they did. In Sync album, both of them. Or the Backstreet Boys album, both of them. They did that. It's all of a Kirkman. They really did no Recovery. Too. They did the Relapse of Eminem. They uh, did Will Smith album, Shaq album. Shit. But yeah. KDS did all of those, so I know those those engineers and those guys who did that, they live somewhere around the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they local. But now I got a question for you. What's your goal, though, man? Where, where, you, where you trying to go with it? What's your next goal? My goal? Well, my next goal. I know you don't, <laughs> don't give us the yeah, sauce. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But my main goal for this whole thing, for everything I'm doing between this comedy and this club shit, is to just do festivals, man. Like, put together big events where not only you're providing a new platform for people, for young people, artists that normally well they'll they'll be talented but they wouldn't get the kind of recognition they deserve but it'll also be more modern you know what i mean i feel like a lot of these festivals even with the comedy thing it's it's real old school it's real 90s so you thank do, you you do yeah. you, do, you do the little application and you gotta wait to get approved by this guy this there you know what i mean i want to make it more modern where it's more fast it's like say there's a comedian a stand-up comedian that'll go viral yesterday he could be on the festival i'm doing next month you know what i mean like i'm trying to keep it keep it quick and fresh, you know what I mean? I don't want these guys to be running in circles for years and years and years, and then they get watered down, and over time, they're not even as funny as they, they, they used, used to be. Because yeah. they, they low-key lost, like, the motivation to keep pushing for this shit, you know what yeah. I mean? So I want to provide, like, a just a huge platform for artists in general, like, whether it be a, a rapper, comedian, whatever, just You need to chill with me, man. I always wanted to be a comedian. Like, people, I was always a class clown. But I, I want to write. I got some jokes for you, boy. It's not. It, I mean, I tell everybody, man. Like when they tell me they want to do stand up, it's really not. Right. Hey, it's I not as hard. Stand-up. Yo, if you do it, it'll make your writing better though, because you'll see the art behind the shit. Like it's not just like I'm gonna write a joke A to B. Like every little thing you do is like the mannerisms, the tone, the tag, like the ad lib. What are you gonna say while people are laughing? What are you gonna say to get people to stop laughing? It takes I, a certain person, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proud so the, yeah, the more you do it, the more art you see behind the shit. It's not just man, let me just get on stage and just talk my shit and you know what I'm saying I thought it was funny you know what I'm saying I mean that's performing too you know I always tell people like you have different types of artists you know a lot of people they'll go perform and they don't satisfy the crowd and they wonder why Mm -hmm. they don't get a response Mm -hmm. back but they don't think about performing your music it's an intimate moment yeah and when you're intimate with somebody you give them attention back and forth. It's a give and take. Mm-hmm. So you can't be an artist that just want to take, 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 right, take. Because right. guess what? They ain't going to remember your music when you leave that door. Right. But if I have a communication with you and I connect to people in that room, guess what? I've done my job, man. That shit works sometimes. But I've been in the cell with Kenneth Turner. And I've been in the cell with Daniel Jackson. They don't work with fools. <laughs> and I got fans. Mm-hmm. 
It ain't about it's about where you from, who you know. That yeah. might be yeah, not your a, way though. 100%. Yeah. It's not my way. I don't want to do that shit. I want fans of London, not Gainesville. You feel me? That's how I rock. Yeah, man. That overseas shit is the way to what yo. How much do y'all really know about the music industry? Because I was thinking Check the other day, I am a rapper who knows everything. But yeah. I have a label, publishing company. What is Word. it that you need to know? Nah, because I was thinking the other day. I saw uh, what's his name? Um, Six Nine. Nah, nah, nah. Well, him too. But I saw a little punk. He had a show that I show in Russia. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Just I was, think, he I was just thinking. Got back. I was thinking it's kind of crazy because like even though like he's he's doing his thing over here and shit, for him to have a whole sold out show in Russia. He's already like plugged in over there. Like, how do you blow up in Russia before you blow up over here? I'm thinking like okay, the I, label I, might have like a blueprint laid out, like yo, because all these rappers they're sounding the same, they're looking the same, they're rapping the same. So I feel like they have like a little format where it's like, yo, I know this is gonna work in Sweden or some shit. All you gotta do is make this kind of song. So Check me out, right? Wait. America is America because we have the top record labels as well. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Except in India, South Africa, shit like that, and Russia, but. Uh, Pump and people the likes of 6 9 they have a uh, repost group. They be with, I ain't gonna tell them because I use them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they be with the repost group, and then they also have managers who have friends who are with those labels over there. Mm -hmm. So you know how Inter Interscope has an office in Atlanta and in LA, and they have an office in Barcelona, Spain. Why? Because mm -hmm. they signing people around there. You feel mm -hmm. me? Um, Def Jam don't have that, but they got Island Def Jam, and Island Def Jam signed guys from London, you know, the West Indian rappers, all of that, you feel yeah. me? Um, but there are other little small syndicated labels because they know how the streaming is today, and they took over the streaming and made their own little, like a little kid from 10th grade made his own little shit, and now his name is Diplo. <laughs> you feel me? And he gets all the money because he knew how to do the streaming without a label, and he started in Europe and London before America. So that's that's how they do it. That's one form, but another form is just you know never burning bridges. Yeah. You feel me? As a businessman, you never burn the bridges. I say I say skip all that and really learn the social <clears throat> media platform because yeah. you see a new breed of artists where they didn't have to go through all that. They they <clears throat> went through the the, the uh, loophole, mm -hmm. and once you learn that, mm -hmm. I mean like. One thing I do like about learning about Soulja Boy, he fucked up the game. Because he was on the cusp when internet took off. Yeah. And they could they, they didn't know how to track that in the label. So he yeah. made money strictly off of his return before they even got a cut on all of his other stuff. He was already wealthy. Before he, well, rich. Mm -hmm. Wealth is different. Before he even, you know, did that. Before he did that. But he understood the market. Uh, it's a lot of things you can do now. I see a lot of independent artists who are banking now, but they understand the market, how to connect, and where to go. I want to know. You feel me? But fuck all of that. Who you got to shout out, man? You got anybody to shout out? Um, just shout out my whole team, man. HHM, Josh, David, Alex, X, Jose, Joe, Jose, Jordan. Jordan. Um, if I forgot, oh Tony, my bad, Meatball. Damn, um, Meatball. God <laughs> damn, you can't forget Meatball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I hit them all. Um, follow shout us out everybody. Yeah, follow me on, on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Where? What do you follow you at? Jari Knows, J A R R I K N O W S. See, I was saying Jerry. Yeah, Say it yeah. again. Jari. Like, sorry, Start it out. J. J. Jari. All the bitches that see him downtown, yeah. here's how you get his IG. A R, I don't know. I don't want to throw no gang sign right now, but uh, J A R R I. K N O W S. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Straight up, straight up, dog. And we're gonna leave it like that, man, for the culture, man. I have one more question though. Who you listening to in the city? In the city? Yeah. Um Damn, who am I fucking with? Nobody. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with the city, man. I I run into like a lot well, of Who like, are you listening to then? Not not heavily like that. I mean I'm fucking with KT, you already know. That nigga okay. doing his thing. Okay. I was he listening to right. some old whoop too, man. I need to let that nigga go already. Cause I wanna okay. hear I wanna hear where his mind's at now. Cause he been he been down for a little while, so I know his music done matured a lot. He probably gonna come, come out and talk and talk and some, some good shit. But um I mean I'm always running into independent artists. I can't really remember them off the top of my head, but they always Run into me, yo, throw my song, I'll throw my song on. So, you know what I'm saying? I have my DJ. They be telling you, you throw the song on, you be DJing? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I just, oh, have my DJ, I just have my DJ play. Like, yo, just, 
So What's the best way to get your DJ player? Because when I go to the club, I get a DJ like twenty dollars and buy him a drink and give him a USB. To Is be that the best way? To be honest, I just leave that whole that whole uh, process up to my DJ. I, I I tell my DJs like that's your department. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to middleman that shit. So real loud, it's good. Yeah, it's, if you yeah. if you want to play this nigga shit, play. If not, not. Because the music, the whole music shit is your thing, my nigga. So. If you throw this shit on and everybody's hitting me up the next day, like, yo, the music last night was trash, nigga, I'm going to be like, yo, nigga, what happened? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's why I don't be trying to middleman that shit, because that's your responsibility. Who you the DJs you'll be working yeah. with? Mainly, I work with DJ22. Um, that nigga is... Dude, dude! That nigga is automatic fire. Like, you Man, know, you play my record, too. Uh, I sent them some emails. Um, we just had DJ Exclusive on last Sunday. Um, I fought with Kevin Kahn, DJ Crush. DJ Crush. Shout out to uh, fucking Jazz. Tsunami. Tsunami, uh, DJ. Uh, and the bros. Um, Puds. Lil Puds. You must know Lil Puds. And then yeah, Puds. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't seen him out in a while, though. What's going on with him, man? I think he went to the island. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Um... That's good, that's good. I can't I can't think of anybody else. If I forgot you, my bad nigga, don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings. <laughs> it's for the culture. If he yeah, forgot yeah, you, yeah. come to for the culture and get your issue. <laughs> Straight up, dog. We out. Appreciate y'all. For the culture. <laughs>